Yeah. San Sandra Bullock right now is listening to this and she's like, what the yeah. F, Tim? All right, everybody. I'm Jody, and I'm here with my best friend, Tim. Tim. Mark. I'm Mark. Mark. Tim. I'm Mark. Of the Bass Nerds. Yeah. And we have a very special guest today. I didn't know was going to be here until uh, about, what, 16 hours ago. Yeah. Mr. Tim Lefebvre, bass player extraordinaire. The bass owner. Bass. <laughs> bass holder. <laughs> bass holder. <laughs> Stand up, uh, carrying the low end for the likes of David Bowie, Black Crows, mm. Derek Trucks, uh, a lot of people. A lot of people. Well, I mean, you know, like the the trio that I mean, every every fucking thing that you do is is golden. But right. Yeah. I'm, what's that trio? What, I've just been what hot for about? what you've been doing, like the stuff with Jason, like Linder? Yeah, dude, it's just so. How sick. did that come about? No, don't do that. He Come put on. it together. No. He put, and honestly, the reason why that band exists is because of, of Mark. Right. Because of oh, Bass Day Lessons. It's not yeah. because of me. It's not because of me. He'll it's, take 10%. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take 10% of credit, <laughs> but that was all you do. Like, you were the glue. You knew everybody, and I was like, well, it would be really cool to put Tim with someone, like a really cool drummer like Nate Smith. I wonder if Tim knows Nate Smith. Of course, you know. You know everybody. And I'm like, well, like, how do we get this... Should it just be a two, the two of you kind of improvising? And then he was like, oh, I've, you know, have, are, you, are you familiar with Jason Lindner? And I was like, oh, that would be sick. Would he do it? And of course he did it. And far and away, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. That was probably, I think that was my favorite performance of my lifetime. Thousands nice. of shows in That's 37 <laughs> years. Like <laughs> that one was really, really special. We dialed it back a little bit just to, to make it work sure. cool. Just like so we don't freak people out completely. But. Well, are you guys still like 100% improvising? Yeah, or are yeah. You, yeah. So like oh, yeah. you just show up and like, all right, like, <coughs> yeah. Nate, do your thing. And I think we're, we're gonna... playing the Blue Note next year. Like it's like, it's, it's kind of a thing. It's cool. I mean, it's, it's, good for, it's good for Nate to, Nate was looking for other stuff to do. Sure, you know, sure. Just because he's ubiquitous but um yeah i mean it's it's good it's good for him it's good for us because yeah you know he's getting us in front of a different audience and and vice versa sort of you know but it's this chemistry in that trio that's really fun right that's yeah, it was right. unreal and even just like seeing the footage of like you did the the festival in st louis st. yeah which was incredible that was awesome you know, I, by the I way i was so bummed i wasn't there it was it, well the, first of all the festival that's one of the best festivals i've ever been to because it was I, just that, dude, the lineup. Incredible. Yeah. You get was Thundercat on that one? I know Mono mm, was on that. I didn't see I, I was there a different day than Mono. But it was like it was like the day I was Everybody. there was like Arrested Development played, like the heyday of hip hop, like you know, joyous <laughs> hip hop bands. It was yeah. fucking great. And and um this young guy named Masego was like getting big, bigger and bigger and, yeah. and Cameo played and Cameo <laughs> Yeah, it was <laughs> wild. It sounded great, so yeah. whatever. Dude, it's Cameo. Yeah. That's awesome. It was just a great festival because it wasn't really a jazz festival per se. Yeah. So that that was the magic of it. it was like all these really cool acts and like, especially like when you see a, a band like Arrested Development and you know like we're all '90s. I'm a '90s. I'm yeah. older than you guys, but but still like you know hip hop then was joyous and fun and a party. Yeah, and it still kind of is, but it's like a little darker now. Yeah, you know uh, there was some dark hip hop in the. 90s yeah, but too. but like but what they were they were, what they were the beats and stuff were super fun and like different yeah. than than they are now. I'm I'm thinking more of insane clown posse as far as <laughs> yeah yeah right dark <laughs> well there yeah, were a couple cool. hip hop NWAs of the world that were putting out <laughs> oh, yeah. some pretty no but heavy still stuff, it was the beats and the production like back then was like sure even like, that yeah right? was so good yeah um, well I, so is there a name for that Nate Smith band well, it's called Leave It Out Leave It Out that's the official Which, working name yeah because because of, because we're Nate and I are fans of Ocean's Eleven and it's a, there's a Don Cheadle scene when they blow out a like a, a safe from a bank or something like that, yeah. and they screw it up, and he goes, how would you leave it out? <laughs> and we, just, we always just crack out. And then he does like a dance move coming into the room, and Nate's a master of it, so. Wait, you, you had involvement in the Ocean's soundtrack. Yeah, I played you? on 12, yeah. That's insane. And 13. That's the best one bit. with all the bass lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I, that was mostly me. It was a little Jason Faulkner in there, and there's, yeah. a, it's, there's a little bit of Robert Hurst. I was telling my brother this, and yeah. I was like, yeah, look it up, Dan, like, because we were talking, yeah. like, I'm going to meet up with you, and he was like, no, he did, that's like, so bass heavy. I was wondering who was the bass player. I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's the dude. That's it's so it's good, the dude. <laughs> the dude. It's cool. Well, that parlayed into like I also played on Ocean's Eight because Daniel Pemberton was doing a similar kind of score, and like he knew I could just come in and do it. So yeah, yeah. I could just come in. And improvise. Well, no, it's a certain. It's a style, right? Yeah. It's like a. It's like a certain. You have to listen to those records, and and uh, you know, 
kind of know the, the aesthetic of it. Right. What you were know. you playing on those? Uh, they were mostly rented basses, actually. Yeah. Uh, one was Larry uh, Klein's um, Country Gentleman bass, Ooh. Gretsch Country Gentleman, yeah. Which I actually get it. I got one later when I was, I was swinging through Rochester, New York, and I found one. Uh, an older one, yeah. Sixty-eight, yeah. Did it have the Brooklyn fungus on the? Bottom? Oh yeah, and it had the, everything, and yeah. the, and you know the the back pad and the, yeah. the necks like ten feet long. You know Jimmy Vivino? I know of him. Yeah. Th that was the first. He he came actually here. We're at Chicago Music Exchange. Yeah. Um, when he came in, we, we were taught he was obviously hot for Gretsch's and stuff yeah. like that. And he's like. Yeah, I see that you got a, got this online. I'm going to come in. Does it have any of the Brooklyn fungus? And I'm like, how are you talking about? It? He's like, the binding. <laughs> Is it all <laughs> fucked up? And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's it, the white binding that goes around it. Yeah. Yeah, but it like starts to crack over yeah, time right. and get moldy and yeah, weird mine's and stuff. mine's mine's weird. That's part of the that's part of the charm. Yeah, though. but you know what's funny? That bass sounds like we you, you were singing that Paul McCartney thing. Well, it sounds like Band on the Run. The bass sound of Band on the Run. I'm not sure what he was playing on that record. Yeah. Probably Rickenbacker. But the, but my country gentleman sounds exactly like that. That's rad. What it's color is it? Sunburst. Yeah. yeah. They, they look so good too. Is it like one of the deep ones, like where the black comes in? Uh, really far. I can't remember. No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, maybe actually. Yeah. I, I I have a picture of it somewhere, but but anyway, like that the most famous cue from there. You know, there was like that. It's called the Day of. Yeah. And that was that bass. I was playing that bass. Awesome. Yeah. That's fun. awesome. And that that's on Ocean's Eight. Twelve. Twelve. I'm sorry. I okay. brought yeah. I brought that one for Ocean's Eight too. I, I forget. I haven't. I actually haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had time. Yeah, it's been on a well, lot. It's of been Sandra, a decade. Sandra Bullock right now is listening to this, and she's like, "What the yeah. f, Tim?" Yeah. Who, who else is in it? Well, yeah, Mindy Kaling. Dude, the the, the like, star. The, you, the cast is amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. It's an amazing cast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the all female version. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that one either. It's good. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. I, I think it, it it and it's canon with the other ones because. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give any spoiler alert. Don't give spoilers. Go see the movie. Uh, yeah, go see I'm the sure there's movie. a heist involved yep. and a bunch of money. Yep. <laughs> yep. Diamond. Insane Clown Posse makes a ref <laughs> makes a cameo. That's great. Cameo that cool? makes a cameo. Really? No. <laughs> cameo makes a cameo in the cameo. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so funny. Fun. fun. Um, well, like so, you know, you're doing a lot of these or have done a lot of these like uh, movie soundtracks and stuff is there i mean are you just getting the call because you're the man or like how do you set that's super specific like that doesn't i'm, I'm like a at best like a d list or a c lister in la for calls for a movie i don't get called for movies yeah i don't think anybody knows i moved back there either so like right i moved back to la <laughs> but I'm, when i'm doing records there it's yeah cool. you know well, i see you're doing some production stuff now yeah too. that's that's been my main focus to get me off airplanes yeah kinda. <laughs> no i'm so burnt on touring it's just like yeah, I, I, I went I started in January last year, and like my first days off were on that Italian tour. And oh yeah. yeah. How, how long were you out in Italy? Uh, May, uh, May to end of July. That so is a very hot time to be in. Italy. Yeah, not even not even August. I mean, August is even hotter. But yeah. it was cool. That was great. It looked awesome. Had man. a blast. You were playing like like thirty thousand plus arena. Fifty or sixty. Fifty. Wow. Yeah. Who are you playing with on this there? This guy Titiano Ferro. He's like a huge pop star in Italy. Yeah. Wow. And, and South America actually. But yeah. Yeah. And how do you get that call? Gary Novak, my from really good like friend. Like uh, Novak pickups? No, that's no. Curtis Novak. That's Curtis no, from like Chick Corea, no. you know, oh, various. Okay. He's on. He's well, really well known drummer. Anyway, but he, he's been doing Italian gigs for a long time. And this one just worked out. It was actually funny because I was supposed to do. This is all happened in 2020. So I got Gary sounded me about that gig, and then I also got the gig with the Black Crows. So like then, I kind of have it like this, and then either way, n neither one of them going to happen because it was 2020 and COVID. Right. Happened, yeah. So. But I went with the Black Crows. Just because, but you ended up getting both eventually. Yeah, sort of. I mean, right. We did well. The only thing I did with the Black Crows was a couple um, showcase gigs. Yeah. Here, at L.A. and New, and New York, and that was yeah. it. And Howard Stern. Oh, yeah. you can't yeah. discredit that. Oh How yeah, that? I saw, I saw it was that. Fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Do wait, wait, so are you? Did you interview with Howard Stern? Or was just no. This is the brothers did. Yeah. We just yeah. Robinson. You know. See, but you they get are. You on camera unless, well, I guess it makes sense. Like Howard Stern's like. I kind of want to talk to the bass player. Yeah, like, no, well, well, that's rude. But well, well, we, like, you know, you kind of jab at the brothers and see if you can get them fight. He's very provocative. <laughs> well, I don't think it takes much to get them to fight. Right? They're getting along now. <laughs> yeah, they are they're now, right? They've been, you, they, they've been together now <laughs> oh, yeah. for how many years at this point, like reunited? Yeah, yeah. but they've had a tumultuous yeah, like, past. on and off thing, right? Uh, dude, I have it with my brother. You have it with yours too, right? Well, I mean, I, we don't fight. We just don't talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know that. I, yeah, I mean, it's just like one of those things. Brothers just always fight. Right. But oh, but yeah. especially when you get into like you know big 
showbiz like showbiz kind of things. It's like oh, yeah. when you're in, when you're in the limelight too, the, the amount of fuck. pressure. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't imagine what that's like. I, I remember like nobody in Louisville, like where I grew up, nobody like at one point wanted to play with my brother and I because he and I would just fight all the time. Hilarious. We just like yell at each other and scream and like he would get really explosively angry and then I would say something that just like just stabs him just enough. Just but really like gets when him. you guys performed and played. Oh, it's it's magical. Right? He I've had those relationships yeah. with bandmates that I just, I'm telling you, I could not stand them. Yeah. Personally. But when we got on stage, we fucking killed. We killed. And I don't know if it was like we wanted to show each other, like, yeah, you suck. It. You, I suck, but we're both going to kick ass in this moment. <laughs> you know? We're going to leave it all on the stage. <laughs> what, do you, what do your brothers play? Guitar. Yours? I don't have a brother. Well, I have a half brother. He right. doesn't play anything. Um, and I have a sister. She played bass briefly, but oh, gotcha. not really a musician. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Do you have um, any siblings who play? Is yeah. Well, my, my younger brother's a guitar player. My older brother's a trumpet player. My sister, Ooh. my sister's a doctor. But my dad, my dad was a middle school music teacher. Doctors can be musicians too. Yeah, she played flute. Dad, yeah, she was decent, awesome. decent flute player. Nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. Trumpet player, huh? Do you ever like do any combo stuff with him? Yeah, yeah, we played together a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Lefebvre Brothers? Is there any yeah. like Christmas tonight, jingles? Tonight at the Holiday Inn. It's yeah. the Lefebvre Brothers. <laughs> the Holiday Inn by the uh, Burbank Airport, Murph, right? Murph and the Magic Tones. That's all I can think of what <laughs> I can Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack <laughs> Shooters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your brother probably loves that impression. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, so I, if anybody has watched any of the past episodes, uh, I am envious of your you know, resume of playing with bands like the Black Crows and so that's trucks. trucks band, yeah. Right. To, I mean I think I mean I think Chris Robinson has one of the greatest voices. Oh he's incredible. Yep. Just yeah. seems so effortless. Absolutely and incredible. Just like, he's a natural showman. Oh, yeah. He's so like Mick good. Jagger and reincarnate. Right. And I just I mean I, he's one of the voices of like if I could if I could pick a voice that I could have, it's like him, Jeff Buckley Maybe like Come on. Maynard from Tool. Right, You're not like, asking for too much at yeah, all. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. but like Chris just has that. He's got like that Lauren Hill like effortlessness in his voice that yeah. he's yeah. just like all colors, all over the place. He's just so so good. Well, a lot of that those guys from that generation checked out so much. Like even like you know Rod Stewart back in the day, they all checked out a lot of R and B. Right. So yeah, because you, like what's yeah, the what's sure. that band Rod Stewart had? Faces. Faces. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a band. funk R and B band. Yeah, that is a great band. You know, like they sing like the melodies are all kind of similar. Like and so Chris. You, know, you can hear Bobby Bland, and you can hear Aretha Franklin. You know, like right. he's, he's, that's where he's gone. That's so, awesome. Yeah, Sue so Chesky kind of was like that too. Like, the, like you know, it's funny. Like those guys, they 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 sing a specific way. So like, it's not like a okay, this melody is going to follow the chords. They just kind of like right. Go well, over like, it. uh, and it's great. You know, it's like yeah, it works. You know, I saw you on the tiny desk with Susan yeah. and Derek, and she just rips. She she's rips. She's yeah, so she, good. She really she's is so good. Um, so, Tedeschi Trucks. I just remember, I remember, actually one of our best gigs I think was here at Chicago Theater. Oh yeah. 2016 or 17, yeah. That's a beautiful theater, man. Yeah, Derek, Derek broke a string. I think we were playing, um, what's that, what's that, uh, what, what is that song? I can't remember the song now. Uh, Soul Shine? I mean, that's no, a no. Devin Mule, More Names. Is it a, don't, deater, deater, this one. Uh. Oh, uh, uh, the whipping post. Whipping post. Yeah, we were playing whipping yeah. post. Yeah. And Derek broke a string, and the, the whole night had been like kind of loose and fun anyway, like just reinventing the songs and stuff, which is my favorite part yeah. of that band. Oops, there we go. So uh, that night we we were playing whipping post as one of the encores, and uh, I think it was or towards the end of the show. Yeah. Derek breaks a string, so then Kofi Burbridge just starts absolutely ripping it. Like, yeah. I felt like we were in a small jazz club. We were just shredding. Yeah. yeah. And then Derek jumped into shredding. It was just like it was incredible, man. It was just like. Way up here. You That's know, the beauty of, of of those yeah. like Almond Brothers t tunes, like just the, yeah. the like the intersection of those guitarists just kind of going nuts. Yeah, keyboardists kind of whipping in. Yeah, and like, so do you did you guys like do you guys normally keep it like in eleven? Do you kind of kind of move in and out of that? No, no, we I, we we kind of did a main sections of it. We didn't we didn't really ever play the whole song. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like <coughs> it's every version long. I've heard is like twenty five minutes. Yeah, long. exactly. Yeah. So we just play like kind of a verse and then a chorus and then solos. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then the end, the epic ending. Right. So yeah, it was it was pretty fun. It's yeah, I like when that band covered Alman Alman Brothers songs because I wasn't a big fan when I was a kid. I remember oh. a Ramblin' Man. I mean, it just whatever I heard on the radio. 
It didn't right. hit me. Oh man, it hit me hard. Me really? Too. Oh, it hit a lot of people hard, just not me. And then, but then, you know, once I was in the band, I could appreciate it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not a southern rocker by any stretch. They're, I don't know. I, I don't really necessarily classify them as southern rock. There's an influence for sure. And yeah. They have influenced a lot of southern rock acts. Yeah. And like, kind of like, really elevated that style, especially for the time. But they're their own entity. I would. But it's felt. still southern rock. Yeah, in, yes. Of in, 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 in sure. essence, I mean, to me. But I mean, there's also. Oh, there's a whole bunch of R&B stuff in there. It's just guitar driven, which is like unusual for R&B. And uh, organ too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. G Greg Allman, right? He was. Yes. Keyboard yes. Yeah. He just passed. Ago? Years ago, I think yeah. like four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a minute. It was a minute, man. Yeah. So you got this quartet that you're playing in Chicago with right now. You want to yeah. tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's the, basically it's minus the drummer, who's the, Zach Danziger, who's one of my best friends since the '90s. Wednesday Night Titans. Yeah, Wednesday Night Titans and uh, uh, Mr. Barrington and. Oceans, all the Oceans movie. That's him on drums. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Every every moment of it is him on drums. Yeah. God. He's yeah. a monster, man. Absolutely. He's a monster. Uh, he's one of the best. He's he's doing so much stuff too. Yeah. Out, outside of just the norm, of course, like we we, we know the Wednesday Night Titans just yeah. right. relationship, but like he he's got this whole multimedia thing. He's yeah, got yeah. This vision. Like he's he always he seems like he's always been like sort of pushing the envelope. Yeah. In a really like inventive way. It was awesome. Like, well, that's been a big influence on me, too, because, you know, like, oh, you know, because like I when I moved to New York, like he was the one to suggest that I moved to New York, but I didn't know he was such a maverick. Yeah. Like, so he hooked me up the way and Krantz, another magnet, a mag uh, maverick. So like I just was like, yeah. oh, boy, here comes creative music. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I wasn't planning on it. But, you know, you know, that's that's where I went. Right. And is that how you like sort of cut your teeth in the improvisational side of things? No, it was, it was mostly in Wayne's band. And like, yeah, actually, that's not true. Yeah. Me and Zach did a record called Bluth in 96. That was our first taste of making a record. But then after that, like, you know, the JoJo Mara started up the drum and bass nights in New York. So like, I was a part of that. And that was oh, all improvised. Sick. Yeah. JoJo was, he, he did yeah. a clinic here at CME like yeah. years ago. Yeah. What a force that guy He's is. an animal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely animal. Yeah. He's a French guy, right? Swiss. Swiss. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry. They speak French. They do. Was he touring with uh, Hiromi for a while? He might have been, yeah. I think so. I think I yeah, saw everybody. him at Everson Space yeah. with uh, with Anthony Jackson. Yeah. Um, Quite possible, yeah. Yeah, I think that's... So, like, you were kind him. of, like, in New York, right in the middle of that really cool improvisational scene, like, like the jazz influence. Yeah. Like, M M Medeski, Martin, Wood. Yeah, pardon me. The Knitting Factory was still was popping off. So, yeah, there was, like, all kinds of great stuff. Like, l late 90s to early 2000s in that's New York was, was, to me, prime. Yeah. I'm New York. I know. think for, for improvisational music in general. Yeah. Like the, the resurgence of that, like obviously you have the 60s yeah. and 70s. 80s kind of fucks everything up because of cocaine and right. you know digital processors. Then 90s sort of recreates some of that spirit and that anima and stuff. And that's why you have so many great bands that like, you, they get categorized as jam bands per se, but it's such like a wide range right. of music. Like the like leftover salmon, <laughs> like the polyethnic Cajun slam grass. I remember the first time I saw them was in 1999, and I was 13. Stood right in the front row. It blew my mind. Like all like the crazy sounds coming out of that. It was a really yeah. inventive time for music, and you were yeah. right in the middle of it. Kind of, and not so much of the jam scene, but yeah. I mean, though we had invites from Wayne Crancis trail. We got invited a bunch of times to open up for some like string cheese incident and stuff like that. But yeah. I don't think we, we opened up once for John Popper's band. What was that called? Blues uh, Traveler. Traveler. Blues Traveler, yeah. John we, Popper's band. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the Sorry. John Popper Blues experience with yeah. harmonica. Yeah. In E flat. Basically, yes. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That, that guy. Oof. You actually, speaking of harmonica players, uh, Howard Livy, he's a Chicago cat. Uh, he's he just uh, play with him. Yeah. playing. He either just played or is just about to play, I want to say, at. Um, Buddy Guy's place. Yeah, I just saw an ad for it. Well, he was. I saw. I caught him with uh, Corey Wong, and when oh, Victor really? Wooten was here. Yeah, yeah. And of course, like when Victor Wooten's on there, they're like, "Hey, Chicago, like Evans, you know, from Evanston, Illinois, Howard Levy and comes out." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like I haven't. I've never seen him play live, and like he's great. Oh my god! Yeah, he's an I didn't know. Like classical harmonica. Someone could, not just that dude. <laughs> you know, like oh his my. ear is insane. I've yeah. never. Imagine somebody could do that with harmonica. Was he? Well, he was out with Dave Matthews for a second too, wasn't he? Oh yeah, in flex so tones and all. <laughs> right, and all right, that. right. Yeah, yeah. He, but he's. I, I, ever since then, I'm like, oh man, I need to follow him. Yeah. And it's it's been just a joy. What that dude is just he just bleeds musicality. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you, I, you know, we on the ride over here. You said this is uh, you know last couple shows of the year. 
And then is there a plan to do more shows next year? I'm trying not to tour till I, I know uh, I'm going to be in Europe a bit. Yeah. But like later in the year. The more I'm taking a break. Italian gigs or? No, mostly Germany. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been like, yeah, I've been, I have a pretty long history in Germany. So like I've been touring with a lot of German artists for a long time. So. Very cool. Yeah, once this piano player, Michael Walney trio, really kind of, it's funny, like we, we do all these, these theater shows with all these old people. And so like they don't, I don't know if they're discouraged or they just, they just don't pull the cameras out. So like as yeah. far as the social media world <laughs> is, goes, like this trio doesn't exist. And meanwhile, this guy is like seriously, to me, a top 10 in the world. Oh, yeah. piano, piano player. Like wow. just and he's in the land of pianos too. Oh man, it's, it's just bananas. So like, so, and Eric Schaefer plays drums and we've done a bunch of records. We won actually, 2012, we won record of the year in Germany, which That's is awesome. fucking wild, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've, I've been to some like wild shows. We actually sold like 10,000 copies of a jazz record. It's bananas. How many? 10,000. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. So, in, in one spot, too. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's that's one of my main focuses. And um, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, there's a couple of potential things brewing. We'll see. But I'm trying not to tour for a little while. Right. Well, for next we year. hinted at that, you know, yeah. doing production I mean, work. and. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do that a lot more. I'm trying to write yeah. with people, which has been, that's been the cool part of moving back to L.A. Yeah. I got back together with um, Nick Littlemore from Empire of the Sun. So, like, we've been doing some writing and, um, you know. I got in some rooms with good with good writers, which is yeah. cool. Because I, I kind of just wanted like figure out if there's another path to not getting exhausted and get a kidney stones, so, you know, right. whatever. Jeez, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, what's the path that you want to take? Well, just to like more of an even balance instead of just getting on planes and touring all Constantly the time. Constantly, yeah, gigging because that's, that's exhausting. When, people are like, oh, it's so fun. You know, like they, people are super naive thing. about how brutal it is. Yeah, like you know, like like what are the four things that you really see on tour? You don't really see the city that you're in. It's like never. This, are you going to do anything fun while you're there? It's like, like these funny, naive questions. Right. It's like, yeah. yeah no, we, uh, we stopped at the pilot outside <laughs> of Red Hook. You know, I'm going to try to find a coffee place. spot that's within 10, 15 minute walk. You know, it's right. just like, that's it. Yeah. That's your cultural experience of the day. Because you have to go to Soundcheck mid-afternoon and it's the right. day shot. And then, you know, you probably get up at 6 and 5 in the morning to get there. You know, oh. not not today, but but, but right. like the call to drive. Yeah, I mean, it's so brutal. At least brutal. the U.S. shows, right? After doing a late gig, you don't, you don't get to the hotel room until like 12 or 1, you know, like and then you have to get yourself to sleep. Right. And then yeah, then you're up at f four hours later or five hours later. It's just like man, and you do that all year. It's just like, whew, brutal. Yeah, like you, you see bands with packed touring schedules, especially jam bands. Too, yeah, where they're just like they were, they're touring like hundreds of dates out of the year. Right. And it's like, oh man, they must be like making a killing. Like yeah, but like, I understand that you get two hundred days off a year or whatever, but what's what's the cost? At what right. cost? Yeah. It's well, it's just, there's so many there's so many parts to it. Like. Being, I mean, I've done some small touring in a, you know, a van, and you got to like sit in a van with four other stinky dudes, right, right, and like get along with those people right. and enjoy that. Not, I mean, it's not just like you, you don't just see them when you're on stage with them. You got to like, yeah, you, you see them more than your partners. You, you have know? to be cool. You yeah. have to, you have to be able to, to, to deal with people. Right. So you got to like have the same <coughs> kind of vibe. Got to be cool with kind of the same thing, and you're yeah. gonna. It's going to get a little smelly and a little gross sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to, you know, and you got to put up with a lot of, I mean, you know, if, you know, I, if you ask me, it, I would love to tour, like the thought of touring as much as you're doing, it's like, sounds awesome, you know, but <laughs> I've also haven't done it. Yeah. You've been doing it a long time. So it's like, Yeah, it's just, so it's, you know, like, plus the money hasn't gotten that much better. I'm, I'm, like, I'm trying to figure out some ways to, you know, increase my prices heavily. Right. <laughs> yeah. But um, so I have a knot in my hair. You guys want to see my knot? Yeah, man. My hair is getting long, so like me and Nergier's ha <laughs> hair is getting long, so like this happens. You get a little thing. You gotta brush that shit, dude. Or I just go don't. bald. And yeah, well, that's that's, a, that's an option too. I'm gonna pull it apart on camera. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, I heard it. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Just Stuff it in the couch. Just roll it in a joint. Get my stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, oh, this burning hair smell is the best. <laughs> Gross. Ah, it's the best. Gross. What was I talking about? I don't even uh, know. Not about not tra right not oh, tourism. yeah. I, I just want to get a more balanced thing yeah. going on. But um, so just kind of what you know, if that means more oh. production or more like, well, writing, just working at home. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. That's I would like to be traveling less. That's why I moved back to LA because I can I can sort of work. I mean, this, this month coming up, I have a record with this singer songwriter named Ju Julian Villard, and then um, Mark Dwayne Morton. We have like a nine day or doing. Mark Dwayne Morton's a guitar player from uh, uh, Lamb of God. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah you, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> so it's but he's kind of doing a jam rock record, and he's a ripper. So oh, like, yeah, they all yeah. Are. yeah so yeah. it's yeah. really it's really good. Band. I know I saw him in Vegas. We hung out. To, he wanted to make sure I was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so he's, he, he like he he tags you to do this this record. This well, you know, he saw thing. he last year when we were in uh, Ronnie Scott's. They were in London too, or something like that. He came to Wayne Crant's trio gig. Awesome. And he said, he said cool. it was like this. <laughs> but his tech knew who I was. His tech's from L.A. So, like, you know, yeah, I think he dragged him there. He's, you got to see this. And, and, you know, he was just like, yeah, hair parted, you know, like, <laughs> dude, fuck, man. And so, like, you know. That's awesome. But he's an awesome dude. We're going to have fun. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, that, that's a hell of a show, too. Like the Lamb God, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 yeah for I remember sure. the first time I heard the record, the Ashes of the Wake record. Yeah. Oh, man. That, I think that was like a... In fact, I was at Moorhead State University in the music department, and I hadn't really been getting into heavy music at that point. I was playing right. tuba in the jam bands and stuff. Yeah. And there was a really badass drummer in, in the percussion in, in the battery for the marching band and stuff, and he would always wear the Lamb of God hat. And I'm like, what's what's that band? Is that like a Christian metal band? He's just like... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, somebody <laughs> else said that to me. I think these motherfuckers are not Christian. No, not He's like, come on, <laughs> don't <laughs> <have something." laughs> yeah. and he put He put on Ashes of the Wake for me, and I was yeah. just like... Oh, yeah. this is awesome! I didn't yeah. know metal could be this cool. Yeah, right. and that was that was kind of it. Yeah, that was that's kind of that plus, you know, corn. Yeah, <laughs> kind of love corn. I kind of like Fucking corn too. It's fun. Well, I used to sub on Saturday Night Live. They were the band one night. It Wait, was, pause. What? First of all, I didn't actually know that you subbed on. SNL. Yeah, I was I was a sub for eight years for James for, Genus. For uh, Genus, yeah, James Genus, yeah. On SNL? Yeah, 2001 yeah. to 2008. Wow. Oh, yeah. man. Well, we got to go back and watch those, dude. Well, I'll I tell have you, a I'll dream of being a in a house band. You can't find it. Like, SNL polices YouTube so hard, but, like, Dave Grohl. It's on Peacock. Is, I don't have it. All yeah. of it's on Peacock. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you could probably see this. But but Dave Grohl, was, I saw an Instagram story the other day. Dave Grohl's telling the story. It was the, one of the episodes that it was Dave Grohl and Christopher Walken. I'm not Dave Grohl. It was it was uh, you know Foo Fighters when one by one came out. Yeah. And Christopher Walken. Okay. And, and so like you know he was talking about how Chris Chris Walken introduced him. It was like Foo Fighters. So yeah. like, <laughs> Fighters. That's so good. <laughs> no, but, but the, I was doing that episode anyway. They played times like these. Was okay. the last yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. They, they do two songs. They do something early and then, yeah. man, they did times like these. And fucking Jim Carrey jumps on stage, and is dancing with one leg at, uh, behind his head, <laughs> hopping around stage behind. I'm dead serious. It was we were fucking peeing our pants. <laughs> You know, like if you're a celebrity, you can just show up at SNL. Right. But I didn't know he was going to jump on stage. And he's was, up he, on was he hosting that night? Or was no, it was there? Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Oh, okay. He right. just, you're like, sometimes people yeah. pop in, like Matt Damon pops in. You know, like if whoever's in New York, they just say, yeah, come come by. And, and man, <laughs> he was on stage, a leg behind his head, hopping <laughs> up and down. <laughs> While they play times like these. Oh, he's a madman. It was, it was so funny. Ah, I, but I you can't it, find it anywhere. No, I have to. Look I tried for to look. It. For, I look for it on YouTube. I'm gonna find it on. I'm gonna find it on Peacock. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then I'm gonna film it with my phone because yeah. you can't do screen capture. I think it was probably 2004. Uh, whenever yeah, one. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll look at Whenever it. one by one came out. Yeah. 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 And oh, it's also cool. great. Like that was the Colonel Angus. I, Christopher I'm Walken. Get home. I'm gonna be still stoned. Look at it this weekend. Tonight, and nice. then I'm gonna turn that on at like one in the morning and make my go. wife watch it. There you go. Did you ever go to the after, after parts? I did a few, yeah. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, who who was the fun ones? Jack Black was a was a fun one. Oh, I bet that was yeah. a blast. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, who else? I went to a couple when Beck like Beck's band was on it. Yeah. Um, was JMJ with him? At the mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I actually auditioned for him the same yearish, same like a couple years before. But yeah. it's like you know, I'm gigantic. And I, you know, at that point, I didn't really know how to play Beck's music, so I was just like, Meh. yeah. But it, it was a it was kind of an afterthought anyway that I was there. So. Yeah. Was there any? I was like, I was like, uh, literally zero for auditions until very recently. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's. If any time I had to audition, yeah, you know. And and the other thing is like, you know, I never subbed on a TV show in LA. I subbed on everyone in New York, every single one except for Fallon, you know. So yeah. that is that you, you have to crack that. that I mean, that you know, thing. I don't I don't know what the story is in LA. I mean, uh, J nobody I, knows. Actually, Jeff Babcock has called me a few times to play Kimmel. I just haven't been available because a couple times I was out with Tedeschi Trucks. And Hagar, Ben already called me to do uh, Corden once or twice, but I was out with Tedeschi Trucks. So. Oh, right on. Wait, was she, so she's on Corbin? James Corden. James Corden. Which yeah. is over. So, right. So she's now. not. Yeah. Yeah. She, she moved to Paris. Yeah. I actually saw her in Paris a couple weeks ago. But nice. Yeah. She's great people. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. And then, um, but that's, a, that's it. And New, York, and New York, like Will, graciously, Will Lee had me sub on uh, Letterman once. Letterman, yeah. For, for a day. I did two episodes on the same day. That was cool. Uh, I did, I did uh, 
what's it called? Stephen, uh, what's his name? Colbert. Colbert, yeah, with, with John Batiste. Yeah. Bunch. That was right before COVID, 2019. Yeah. I did a lot that fall. And then, um, what else? Yeah, his yeah, album is great, by the way. Huh? His album is great, by the way. John Batiste? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's great. Fucking, so Super good. good. So good. Uh, who's, who's the really great British guy who's got the late night talk show? I've been seeing a lot of his stuff lately. My wife loves him. I'm having the worst brain fart right now. John Oliver? No, not John Oliver. No, no, no. He's Jules Holland? British... No, Jules Holland. That, that's a cool show, too. No, this is a late night talk show that's in the UK. Pierce? No. Oh, oh man. I'm I know not... you mean, right? Yeah. God, and he's got the. I just I watched an interview yeah. with him and John Cena, and like the story oh. of the. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. So yeah. funny to see like some of these ex athletes, like like <coughs> Dwayne Johnson, John Cena. They're, they're fucking hilarious. These yeah, guys. right. They're like so smart. These guys. You think they're dumb and like have CTE <laughs> and shit, no. which they might, but but right. they're really smart dudes. You do uh, you know? I love the uh, the like the the trajectory where like The Rock starts wrestling yeah. becomes this mega star now it's just like wrestling's the thing of the past where he's the superstar yeah and then john cena starts to follow and that's he started as a rapper then goes he did wrestling. Yeah. yeah he was a rapper then he got into wrestling and like became the mega star that he was then he like he's like i'm gonna follow the the rock pack because i'm this yeah. huge star and he started doing all those pg-13 movies and like some of them were okay some yeah. were like whatever and then all of a sudden like he did uh that movie with uh, amy schumer uh, train wreck. Yeah. Oh right. my God. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. Yeah. He is so. And like from then on, I was like, he's got to do the radar our stuff. And now he's doing he's doing Peacemaker. Yeah. That's and really like all that stuff. Did he do? He did uh, Suicide Squad too, right? Yeah. Yeah. He right. Did that, that's where he start. We'll start with that. <laughs> right, right. And dude, like just watching him, just. Yeah. Like oh, he's he, great. He, he's going to own, like, I don't think yeah. The Rock could do the rated R movies like John Cena can, right. and then vice versa. Like, right. You know what I mean? That's so great to see that. I love it. So yeah. speaking of sports, you're a big Pats fan? Yeah. Yeah. Mert, mert. Mert, mert. <laughs> it's been a fun season. I've seen it coming though. Yeah. Brady left and just all went to shitter. Yeah. It was all Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how it's not. Clip it. <laughs> Clip it. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, you know, look at the roster. Yeah. This no, guy, this guy, point. let the roster go to shit. He could have had all these guys. That, I mean, I guess many other teams could have too. But you know, they they just drafted these guys who are just morons. Like this, like. The, Two years ago, when they took Cole Strange in the first round, I was like, Dude, "Oh yeah, what are you doing?" Yeah, no, like, no. Does that? None of these guys are good. None mm -hmm. of them. Like the the, like the the amount of I saw the stat where like the amount of people signing their second contracts for the Patriots is like none for the past ten years. That's draft abysmal. picks. Yeah, none. That's 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 pretty abysmal. That's not a good yeah. sign. Yeah, there's going to be probably one like Kyle Duggar. They'll sign him again. Th there's going to be another like management change. Oh, soon. he's out. Yeah, I know this. I know this with good. I have good on good authority. He's out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, I think I think instead of firing, they're just trying to trade him. So they yeah. get a draft picture or right. two. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a diehard Steelers fan too. Yeah. I'm surprised that Tomlin still still because he's good. He's over 500. He's, yeah, every that's year. true. He's got he's got a good record, <coughs> but like it, it's yeah. been. It, you, sometimes you see him run, running kind of stale. Like uh, yeah, uh, Andy, what's his nuts? Who was at Eagles? Now he's Kansas City. Reed, Reed. yeah, Andy yeah. Reed. I love watching Andy Reed on the yeah. sideline. By the way, yeah, he's he's just he just. He's so stoic, and he's just like this, like grumpy, mustachio, just big dude. Yeah. And like, he's awesome. He gets really great stuff. Like one of my favorite seasons, '05, Philadelphia Eagles, when they went to the right. Super Bowl that year, and so just gets, like gets the Pats. Hit, yeah, <laughs> and then they lost. Uh, but like, but seeing the camaraderie with uh, him and T.O. like Terrell Owens yes. and uh, Donovan McNabb, and yep. it was so fun to watch. I'm not yeah. even an Eagles fan. It yeah. Was super fun. Yeah. We're talking about football. Yeah, the Bears can't really be a fan of them in Chicago. I think they're oh, like sorry. two and eight or something right and now. Don't don't they have Carolina's draft pick? I have no idea. I they do. I, after they lost like four in a row, I was like, all right, I'm not watching any more of this. I'm done. Well, so. they put that other guy in, and he's, he's decent. Yeah, he the I actually they're, they're playing decent right name. now. Hate to tell you. No, uh, that I've been hearing the grumblings and stuff. I just don't yeah. even bother watching. I yeah. just. Steelers, and that's about it. Yeah, I've, I've tuned out. I'm, I'm at U of L. I watched University of Louisville. Oh, cool, nice. That's what we have. We have Malik Cunningham. I watched the. I wish they'd fucking play him. These guys are so unimaginative. This is like yeah. Malik Cunningham's like a killer quarter. And you know the other thing is like they, they're starting Bailey Zappi probably on Sunday. That guy threw like his senior year in college threw for six six thousand yards. Six thousand. Yeah. Western Kentucky, right? Yeah. Or no, it's like fifty or sixty touchdowns. Yeah. Was it something really was at UK. I thought it was at UK. Oh, Eastern Kentucky. That's what it was. Yeah. I mean, he, he was balling in college. It's like, just let him play. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, Mac Jones had, had basically the All-America team. Do you think him. that's a contract thing? With Mac, Mac Jones? Just how they're starting and how they're, like, putting everybody on their, on their lineups. 
Like, you think it's like they're they're getting played play time, they're getting like snubbed because of contracts and shit. Then nobody's getting paid anything. The only guy who's getting paid anything is Matt Judon. Yeah. Uh, no, well, they overpaid Devontae Parker. They over, they over, you know, they're just throwing money at the, all the idiots instead of like what they should be throwing. They should have signed DeAndre Hopkins. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They could have had him in the preseason for not much more than what they were paying Devontae uh, Parker. So it's just like, <coughs> I don't, I don't get it. This episode of Base Nurse brought to yeah. you by DraftKings. I am. I would love to touch on like uh, some current gear you're using. I okay. know you're doing some like Jad Freer, yeah. Amps Cabs. I am. I have little knowledge of their stuff, so I'd love to hear what you like about them, what's, yeah. what's going on with that. And I know you're like, a, you've played I'm, some Cerex and some other yeah. stuff too. Yep. So like, uh, what's your kind of- shut up and let him talk, man. I, I yeah. like talking about this stuff. <laughs> I do. I mean, I'm still an Ampeg guy. I mean, you know, like yeah. I'm still with them, but but I'm also with Jad Freer now. Cause like, yeah. cause I was in Italy all summer and I've been using, anyway, I was in one of the, I have Capo number one. Okay. Oh, really? The, the, the DI box, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. So, I mean, once I, was, I got that and like, I was like, whoa, things. Yeah fucking rad as hell what's the it, what's the magic behind that well it's just a nice preamps everything is super clean there's like double xlrs out of it it's just there's so many options on it um and uh, they just they're making one that's like my signature one i mean it's hardly you know like it basically it's the same box with a switcher so you can switch between the clean and the yeah which is what i'm using tonight that's what's up yeah because because like if i'm using pedals like i don't like putting sub pedals like, this is the, the only problem i have with the noble di Everybody's been using Noble, blah, 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 all these yeah. preamps, but they're sending the pedals in through the preamps, and it's just, it's not, it's not quite the clarity, and it's not like, you know, it gets distorted and stuff when you start playing subs and, and stuff like that. So I like playing the effects through the capo clean side with no EQ. Yeah. Yep. You can't, there's no flexibility on the Noble to do that. Not that okay. I'm comparing, I Noble sure. sounds great too. But, I mean, honestly, you know, I did a shootout on my YouTube page, I did a DI shoot. I did uh, this Crucial Audio tube DI, was great. Capo, everything flat. No, no, no sauce. Yeah. Capo, um, uh, Noble, yeah. and um, and the Crucial Audio, okay. and and the Capo one. Yeah. But and then again, like then, but then uh, Jack Rowan let me know that I, you know, I, I have an old um, Noble DI, so I had the flat switch off, which is actually a bass cut, which I didn't know. Okay. So, but it's still like you know, like it still when sounded incredible. When you say it won, like in what regards? You like I just played the same bass through the same mic priest, mm -hmm. just like dung 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 dung, you know, just like how fat the notes are like you know like what how much it's speaking through the thing and I'm, i just okay i just to my ears at one yeah so so that kind of sold me the first way but but i had been using it anyway like it's like uh, i just sometimes i'll use the crucial into my if i feel expensive i'll because i have a retro instruments power strip yeah. thank you retro instruments by the way they didn't give it to me but but they gave me a, a little little deal on it and it's absolutely incredible box like pull tech style eq the compressor yeah. and a so anyway, I run the tube DI into that, and so like if I'm playing like five string on a smooth jazz track or something like that, I'll, yeah. I'll go through that just to warm it up a little bit. But uh, Capo, I always go through my 500 series like Cranborn Audio or, yeah. or mostly my Cranborn actually. Okay. I, li I kind of like the Cranborn. It's not expensive, but man, it's got some juice to it. Yeah. So I do that, and that's what I when I did the Italian tour, I modeled that into my Quad Cortex from Neural DSP. I'm loving the QC, mm. dude. Have you have you been messing around with the Bergantino Super Pre at all? Yes, I have actually. Yeah. Uh, when I was rehearsing for the Titan Ferro tour, I was playing keyboard based, and that was what I was running the keyboard based. You were running the keyboards through it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Is it's it just because cool. it's so clean. It's amazing sounding. Yeah. Plus the EQ and the compressor on it's like super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun to it's I I, I have a lot of fun like just sort of sculpting sounds, but I'm yeah. really interested in like I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet, but I do like it a lot. Actually. There's so much under the hood, man. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of I know. outrageous. Yeah. I think so. I mean, you know, they had, these people had to up their game, though, because it's yeah. like, you know, the market has gone from like old amp rigs and stuff. Like, there's so many amp modeling things going on now. And like, yeah. like, just like, so that you can even just use that on a concert if you yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Because not all the in ears are great with subs. No. No, have you messed with the backbeat? The backbeat. I, uh, yeah, at Base Day I did. Yeah. yeah it's, it is cool. That's yeah. Very cool. That, I, I, swear by it yeah i actually that would I, probably do the trick i it, that does i mean honestly yeah. like that i both the bands i've been playing with we use in-ears and yeah I, I always have the backbeat on and yeah. it just it you feel like you're standing in front of an 810 yeah yeah and you hear everything perfectly clear it's awesome yeah i mean on the summer tour we were on in-ears too but but i had the amps on yeah and kind of yoked actually it was pretty because it was, it was the jazz for a sisma 410 for the bass and then Jad for a Sisma 410 for the for the synth bass. It oh, was just like massive sound. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever mess with the uh, the Ike uh, pleasure boards? Ike, no. Or, or like the tech amp? Tech it, amp it was tech yeah, amp. Yeah, Thomas yeah, Ike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had one with Tedeschi trucks. 
Yeah. But I kept blowing it, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I would, I would put the sub pedal on. And it couldn't, I was like, can anybody make something that won't blow? Like, See, that's what you need to do. <coughs> you need to, like, just hang out with your kidding problem. Yeah. You lay on the fucking pleasure board and just play and practice. And right, right. The, the sonic will waves up. will, like, break it up. Right, right? exactly. That and a couple of glasses of apple cider vinegar. <laughs> there you go. Okay. ACV. <laughs> ACV and subs, dude. <laughs> God, no. Hilarious. Did you take your B12 shot today? I mean, we're old. We're, we're no, talking I, about I didn't, now. No, I didn't do it. No. It was just in the car. It's like I'll just be like all jumpy and hyper. A buddy, a buddy yeah. of mine used to be like the rock doc, and he would get you know flown to big festivals and stuff like that. And there, uh, he was talking about like there's two, uh, there's a duo. I'm not going to say who they were, but yeah. they're like a legacy act. Yeah. And one's a famous singer. The other one's a famous guitar player, and they were playing this festival. And uh, like he did the tour with them, and J every Jason night. Jason Momoa's company, by the way. There you go, Jason Momoa. Yeah. You buds. No, he's a bass player, though. Yes, he is. He's a I decent to, bass player. Yeah, I want to meet him, actually. Well, long story short, back. these aging rock stars swear by B12 shot in the ass. <laughs> and, like, the doctor who's just like, I don't know, it might make you feel a little bit more energy, but, like, they swore by it and yeah. they stopped doing drugs. So, you know, there's something to be said about that. Would Definitely. you do, give me a B12 shot in the ass tonight? Sure. I'm feeling a little tired. Uh, but could, could, could he prescribe Klonopin? That's, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. That's cool. really... What we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just cut to the chase, right? Yeah. <laughs> Give me the clons. I want to like a baby on an airplane take a clon up in. What bases have you been really gravitating towards outside of the village stuff? Well, I just got it. Well, on the Italian tour, they backlined a P base for me, two P bases, actually. Nice. One, one was uh, Maple Neck and one was Rosewood Neck from this guy, Handyman. It's like this really tiny maker in, in Rome. And nice. uh, so they made, he made me this base, and it's absolutely incredible. Like cuts like a knife. It's yeah. insane. That's awesome. Yeah. So I ended up buying it because I liked it so much. Rad. So that's that's the latest one. Well, I, I have um, Ellis Hans building me a LEH. Oh, I love Ellis. Yeah. That so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be cool. Um, so I have that handyman P base. What else has been new? I mean, I'm always you know Wilcox. Although you know it's funny. I tracked I tracked the the Grand because it sounds like a music man a little bit. Yeah. I tracked the Sarah Grand on a on a thing that sounded really good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Because that's I don't really have a music man. That, that I definitely need to get a music man in my hands at some point. Yeah. I mean, I would like to get the Dark Ray, but but uh, I, I did a, I did a demo video for him, but but they didn't give me one. I had, would have had to pay for it, which is fine. Right. You know, I get it. That's but fine. it's a nice bass. Well, the, the Dark Ray's got the dark glass in it, right? It's got the well, Alpha it's Omega. Fuzz, the Alpha yeah. Omega, yeah. Which is the best one. Yeah. Although you know, it's funny. I I, I put the this this tour. I put my uh, Microtubes X7 back on there. Yeah. It's. Terrifyingly, it's terrifying that distortion. Well, so that but the the quad cortex has those built in too, right? Yeah. More or less, yeah. yeah. Well, they were the same company, I, but uh, I think he sold Doug Castro sold uh, Dark Glass to Korg. Right. Is that what happened? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He sold the and Spectre is, is owned by Korg. Is owned yes. by right. I mean, like Spectre, Spectre, Aguilar, Aguilar, Dark Glass, and yeah. probably a few other like smaller companies. Yeah. I mean, Spectre bases are great. They're always great. I, I just hope, I hope Dark Glass doesn't fall off because they, they were making such incredible shit yeah. for a long oh, time. Man, oh, I was, yeah. when they first came out, I could not keep those pedals in stock, man. Yeah. Yep. We, we'd be like, how many of them can I, do you have left? 150 BK, B7Ks. Those are like, incredible. All, of them. all gone. Yeah, and you all. know what else is great? Like, like that's on, on the, the two channels. When I record, I record two channels, sometimes three, yeah. but mostly two. The second one's the Dark Glass Atom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. man. That's that a is sounding fucking pedal. gold, that thing. Yeah. yeah. Gold. Yeah, I don't think they make a bad pedal at all. You no. know, the vintage micro tubes is great. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Jordan Cortese is doing a lot of really great stuff between Aguilar and Dark Glass. Is it cool? Yeah. He, he comes yeah. from Federa and then Cor yeah. Aguilar hired him on. And then with the acquisition, he yeah. just became. He, if, if every company that he works for would just listen to that guy. <laughs> they'll be in good hands so now that he's sort of like helping steer the ship over there yeah i think that that dark glass will be in in good hands cool. personally yeah. I, I think so and yeah. i really love that dark glass um was it the c500 yeah the head that you e can 500 the, it's a e element yeah, yeah. 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 uh I have and you know you can plug in your with the app and there's yep. just like endless pedals yep. and you yeah. can just well, it's like having a quad cortex, really. Right. Yeah, put, well, I, you know, they they all, they gave me a couple alpha megas and like you know the microtubes amps, so yeah. like, it's all in there anyway. Well, first, I think it's important. I want to thank uh, Chicago Music Exchange. Yes, for thank you. Allowing CME. us to use their their space, and hopefully, it's not the last time. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and uh, obviously, Tim for this like short. Thank notice. you for having me. 
coming here, making it happen, and yeah, that, that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I have some rapid fire questions. These are questions that we pretty much ask everybody on the podcast, just you know, base related. Okay. What do you want? Uh, so, active or passive? Passive. Uh, maple or rosewood or whatever neck. Shit. <sighs> you only got one. Kind of maple. 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 Yeah. All right. I think that would be my. Well, I like ebony. I mean, I have maple a million bases with rosewood and ebony, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to find more bases with, with maple necks. Yeah. Uh, st- what, uh, what's your go-to or favorite like speaker size, or do you do like combo amps? Do you have a favorite? I mean, you know, like every time I go on the road, like the, I backline a SVT, yeah, uh, yeah. like an eight CL blackface, and and a four ten. Yeah, four ten's got low end, more low end to me. Yeah. The a tens just splatter mid range everywhere to me. I think it's just because it's so high up and you have like the ground yeah. like, push. That's with the four tens. But I'm really I'm, I'm kind of a fan of that. Yeah. You know, just I, fe- feeling the low end. Yeah, I just swore off a tens because they were so fucking heavy and big, and yeah. I was like, never. I, I mean, it's you, on four tens. You know what else is awesome? Like I got it for the Black Crow store. The, the Dark Glass two twelve. The two twelve cabinet is yeah. fucking terrifying. The Bergantino two twelve. <laughs> I have heard that. Jim's a wizard. He is the man. Uh, do, do you have a favorite bass player? I mean, I got a few. Um, um, boy, oof. Mark Najar. Najar, Najar is great. Oh, Dicky, <laughs> I'm not got a big Meshuggah craze right now. Yeah. So like Dick Lovgren, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a fucking animal. Monster. I'm trying to figure out how to play some of that stuff. It's really hard. It's and really hard. Really hard. Really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know who else. Who else? Uh. Okay, this is this one always puts me on the spot. I mean, because I don't, you know, like I don't. Well, like when you were coming up, or you're. Oh, you coming up, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, Victor Bailey, yeah. Daryl Jones, Marcus Miller, yeah. uh, the hits, the hits, yeah, Pino, Palladino, yeah, even Pino now, Michelle and Diego Cello. Yeah. Actually, you know, funny, like you know, like the whole thing about if you're not old enough, you don't you you, you don't realize that Michelle, even though you know Pino was making hits forever, but like Michelle, when when Plantation Lullabies came out. Every bass player I knew, like especially me, I was just like, "Holy shit!" Oh yeah, yeah. What's what's going on here? Like this is new funky ass shit. Yeah, even that 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 tune was it Mellencamp or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that one like Wild yeah. Night, her, their version of Wild yeah. Night. Even mm-hmm. the bass on that, it's killer, so good, it's so identifiable. That was the first time I was like, "Whoa, who yeah, is yeah. this?" That, but, I mean, that was the first time I had heard. But that her. was ten was years kid. before Voodoo. Yeah, yeah. When, you know, like that. So yeah. to me, like that was a that was the real first earthquake. Yeah. To a lot of other people who are younger than me, it was voodoo. But yeah. it was like, no, 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 Michelle. And then, and then Peace Beyond Passion. Uh, yeah, so she's one of my favorites. Uh, Paul Jackson Jr. <sighs> yes. Who else? Paul Jackson. Yeah. Oh, Jr. is a guitar player, right? Yeah. Paul Jackson. You're talking about Headhunters? Yeah, yeah. Paul Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Paul Jackson. Rest um, in peace. Yep. Yeah, that was recent, too. Who else? Modern, like, like guys now? Sure. Who's exciting you right now? I mean, obviously, Mono's doing great stuff. Um, no. I don't really listen. I mean, honestly, I don't listen to too many of those people. Yeah, I just don't. I don't have time, and I don't care. Yeah, it's yeah, not even. Not, it's not even like personal. I just like. I'm too right. Busy. Last thing you want to do after touring or getting home from a gig is. Oh, like what new bass player should I be intimidated by now? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> or or it's, it was trying to intimidate me. Whatever. Yeah. No, but there's several. Like, actually, there's a bunch of good upright players. Like, that's really to me. Like Harish Raghavan. Oh yeah. Fucking. I mean. I mean, Ron Carter, Carter, right? Ron Carter, yeah. I mean, well, he's a legend. I mean, you want to go back? Sure. I mean, that could go on for days. Yeah. Like Charlie course. Hayden, Wilbur Ware, you know, blah blah blah. You know, like millions of them. Yeah. Anybody who played with Wayne Shorter, yeah. you know, Patatucci is an animal. Right. Yeah. yeah. But um, and even Eddie, Eddie Gomez, like you know, like like I'm gonna also on a big Keith Jarrett kick. So like you know, Gary Peacock. But yeah, I mean, current guys, you know, there's a bunch of like incredible dudes, right. like especially on upright, Linda O. Mm-hmm. Like these these people are like next level, you know. I've I've been playing more upright this year than than I have in the last couple of years, and like you know, you realize it's like eesh, I'm trying to hang in there. It's like oh boy, yeah, there's, there's so many good ones. Yeah, you know who like have studied the instrument. I haven't really studied it, so I'm just like kind of out hacking. But it's yeah. it works. Yeah. I'm out hacking. That's I'm just out hacking. Phrase. You know? oh. A new phrase. A new phrase. Weed All right, piece of gear you were get, getting rid of. Oh man. I can't think of one. I That's mean, I, I, I sold my the, one of the bases I used on Bowie's record. I let go for very cheap. Yeah, but I, it was a, it was like a seventy-seven P bass. So I was like, whatever. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, hard case or gig bag? Reunion Blues Voyager. All right. That's what's up. That's a gig that's, bag. That's similar to that. It's a little bit of both. Yeah, it's similar to You can check that. Place. I check, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I'm, I'm on flight, like, with that, well, you'll see it tonight, but, like, I'm on flight, like, three or four hundred with, with my Voyager. That's yeah. awesome. Checking it. Yeah. I go, I go right up to the thing. I don't even, I bring it to oversize if they tell me to do that, but yeah. I just go, here you go, with yeah. my suitcase. You gate check it? No. Oh, I you check mean? It, I check, check it like check. luggage. Whoa. That's brave. You're a brave, dude. No, it's, it, that, it's perfectly. That's protected. what it's made for, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfectly. I mean, they say no, don't do that, but like you know, like they bring it out with all the golf clubs and shit and shit. So yeah. It's just like yeah. it's totally fine. Yeah. It's like so padded on the sides. Yeah. I think we got time for one more question. Okay. Uh, well then, uh, mur, 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 mur. we already talked about your rig. We talked about pedals. Uh, how do you feel about relic instruments? I like them. Like them. I'm not against them. Yeah. Same. My, Most my, people are kind of. Hmm. No, I like them. My, my the bass I got from Rome is relic. That's right. Took a razor blade and just it's fucking cool. Yeah. 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 That well. Uh, and then I guess if I had one more question, do yeah. you have a uh, band or artist you would love to play with, like that you haven't played with yet? There's a couple. I mean, you know, a dream gig would be like Nine Inch Nails or something, but they don't. They don't. Oh, I saw. But I want to be. You know, the thing is, is like, all right, bass. It's like, all right, I'll play bass, but. I want to do stuff that's more interesting. I want to play guitar and bass and keyboards on the same show. And there's, yeah. I mean, you know, there's a couple of bands that, that could fit the bill. Sure. You know, like, but I don't know. I mean, you know, Autolux I'm a fan of. Uh, who else? Um, the Smile, obviously. Michael McDonald. Well, I, I made one happen this year. I did a record with Fink, this singer-songwriter from... Nice. Yeah. Manifest. It, You're in it, L.A. now. It happened. Nice. No, we did it in Berlin. Because he lives in Berlin. I'm saying oh. you're in L.A. now. You manifest. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I am very, very grace today. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if somebody wants to see what's going on, where can they follow you? What is your Instagram? All that my Instagram's at Tim Lefebvre, L-E-F-E-V, not my full last name. Okay. L-E-F-E-V, at Tim L-E-F-E-V. So then uh, that's where I, you find out everything there. I have a website, timlefebvemusic.com. Yeah. I list most of my dates there, but... That one I'm not keeping up as much because the socials are just always beating yeah. out. I have a Facebook fan page too. But like, Sick. what are you on personally most? You think Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. yeah, that's the place. Yeah. That's what I'm on the most. I think. Yeah. yeah. So we send each that's other. Dude, we, I'm we telling you, each I, other you don't even have to go to a store anymore. No. Right. All the gear I've gotten like the last year, like through Mass Distro or whoever, it's like all off Instagram. I just yeah. got that. I keep seeing ads for Reigns. You know, like that. Yeah. That, I, oh, I, got I get, uh, dude, I, I can go on for days about like. I just got that over. bag in Berlin. Yeah, because it, it, it was a store. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm buying it." it you saw the ad, like the ad online. A million of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, there, there's, there's been a few purchase like Instagram ads purchases that I get. Oh, me too. To. I yeah. do it all the time. Oh, it's great, dude. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so awesome. much, man. You guys are the men. It's always fun. You guys are the men. We're you, the men, the, yes. the nerds. We're real he hems, you know. <laughs> Hardly nerdy. We took this is not nerdy. Oh, well, I'll open your shirt. You know, like, <laughs> um, you know. Well, well, that's all. That's, that's all. all. Follow okay, that's all. Nerds, that's all. I'm gonna play the bass now. Like, subscribe, follow, uh, review. Wash your ass. Wash your ass. Get your B12 shot.